Hello! Something a bit different today. Um, I've decided to do a bit of a tutorial, just sort of showing you what I did to make my uh, my most recent track really ain't that bad. Um, give it a listen if you haven't. And uh, yeah, I suppose in turn this uh, becomes a tutorial on uh, um, how to make a track reminiscent of uh, Panda Bear's person pitch which was the inspiration for my track. really tried to hone in on the sound that that, that album has and um, uh, experimenting with making music in a way that I haven't really done before. So uh, yeah, before we start, I think I'll give you a bit of background on um, uh, on Person Pitch. So Person Pitch is an album by Panda Bear, who, was, uh, who is a member of Animal Collective. The album is primarily samples, well it's pretty much all samples except for his voice. It's quite hypnagogic, psychedelic, but also not so much in line with a lot of his other work. Um, it's quite unique amongst his catalogue. And yes, yeah, it's all sample based. I think he made it on a SP303, name of it, very popular sampler. This album often gets labelled as sort of proto vaporwave, proto chill wave. It's in, in some ways quite ahead of its time and um, yeah, quite unique in that regard as well, especially amongst sample based albums. Like some other ones that I really like that are really highly regarded are Introducing and Since I Left You and both, you know, incredibly um, amazing sample based albums in their own right, but I think Person Pitch does something quite a bit different than that and Panda Bear really puts his own spin on it and um, I have a lot of respect for it. I like it a lot. And uh, I think without further ado, let's uh Let's get into it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is find a main sample. This will make up the bulk of your track. I think there are two main factors that go into uh, picking a, a good sample for something like this. I think the first thing you want to look out for is if the harmony is quite simple, usually Panda Bear will pick a fairly simple sample when it comes to harmony. You know, it, it might only have one or two chords in it, you know, something that's quite easy to work with. I think this will make um, working with uh, more samples that you bring in quite a bit easier as well. And the other factor is finding a sample that's fairly rhythmic. Um, if you consider that we're not necessarily going to be using a, a percussion track, um, a lot of the rhythm should really be dictated with the sample. But ultimately you can pick whatever you want. You know, there's there's a load of different samples on person pitch. A really wide variety. Ultimately there's no right or wrong sample to choose from. The sample that I've chosen is this one by the Beatles. 60s rock and pop um, is a good place to start when it comes to picking a sample. Uh, play it for you. So the bit that I want is it's this bit. So I mean, you've probably seen this loads of times, but I'll uh, reiterate it here. You're gonna wanna cut the loop out um, and then set it to tempo. You sort of wanna find the start here. And you'll notice the start because there will often be quite a big transient, as you can see. Um, so that's sort of cut it there and then you want to find the end of it which is this chord here and cut just before it just like that now it's quite helpful to play it through a few times just to make sure that um, it sounds alright that you've sort of got it in time and it's not cutting off at a weird point and it sounds quite natural great that sounds good to me um, and if you're on FL Studios, I presume this might be quite similar for other ones, but when it's in resample mode, um, you can change the tempo and it will stretch the track. The closest that it will get to being a one bar loop, I suppose, is here, I think. So we'll get it like that and then just cut off the end of it. As you can see, that's in time. Um, now what I did is I changed it to stretch pro and turned it back to resample just so that 
when we change the tempo it doesn't stretch the sample as you can see it stays it stays in a stays in tempo but the pitch changes which is important I think the pitch I went for for my track was 112 so, there you go. so yeah that's how you get your sample in a uh, in time um, you can just and paste this a bunch if you want. There you go. Alright, so next we're going to process this sample. I'll show you how I do it. So we've got it here. Um, first thing I notice is that there's a lot more in the left channel than the right, if you can sort of see that. it's It doesn't matter too much, but I think when the the stereo field is mostly in, in the center. I think that's when it, it, it sounds a bit better, um, at least in my ears. So I mean, you can use whatever you want for this, but the things we've got in FL are uh, this thing here called a stereo shaper, which just sort of helps to uh, adjust the, uh, yeah, the stereo separation of it. So yeah, everything feels a bit more central now. And then to make it a bit wider, I like to use a plugin literally called Wider. Um, and uh, the setting I usually do is 125, but then I turn the mix level down to about 25%. It just adds a bit of breath to it. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you can sort of tell, it, it will push it more towards the middle, but sort of add stuff to both the sides, which I think really helps. Yeah, next you just want to make it very, uh, <laughs> very reverby. Very common trend in uh, Panda Bear stuff. So the first thing I like to do is put in a delay. Uh, I'm going to use a ping pong one. That helps with the stereo separation as well. I'm not going to add much here, just something a bit light. Because you know, if you add too much, it just, it just, it just doesn't sound good. It, you lose the, the the rhythm from the sample, which pretty integral. Next I've got, I mean this is just a reverb. Um, I'm going to take out some of the lows from this. Um, just like that. Lows and reverb don't really, don't really work well together. Right, and lastly I'm just going to have a, an EQ. Bear's tracks, he has a lot of um, a lot of highs um, in the sample, so you know, you, you don't want to make it too loud. But, you know, cause it, it, it feels feel a bit claustrophobic, and it's, it just sort of opens up. Okay, so next up we're going to have a look at the vocals. Panda Bear likes to write quite personally. Um, of course this is your own track, so you can write however you want. Panda Bear's lyrics tend to be on a more simpler side, not very metaphorical, perhaps a little bit blunt in areas, especially on person pitch. When you're writing your lyrics, I wouldn't necessarily worry about how you're gonna fit them into the track. Just sort of write what you want, what you think sounds good. Because when you do that, you have more options rhythmically when it comes to the track. If you fit your lyrics with a certain flow, then that sort of limits your differentiation when it comes to fitting it in with the track. I've brought in a couple of the vocals from uh, from the project. These are just the intro vocals, so I'll show you how to do those. I'm going to put these two here. Um, when you're recording your vocals, I think it's best to double track them. Panda Bear does that with most of his vocals. Um, so you just record them twice. Um, it definitely helps with staying in key, <laughs> especially for me. I'm, I'm, I'm not the greatest singer. And so if you have multiple vocal takes over each other, yeah, it, it helps it stick on key a bit more. It's less detectable. So yeah, uh, I'm going to show you how to process these. Um, I'll play you it. Uh, I'm not gonna let you tell me how to do it. As you can see, not that great, but uh, yeah, we're going to show you how to make it better. First thing, I'm just going to put both of these on a mixer channel. Let's rename this to vocals. First of all, what you want to do is, I'm just going to lower it a little bit. You're going to compress the vocals. 
I tend to compress them. I'm not gonna let you tell me how to do it. Not massively, but like a decent amount. But all I really want is somebody to care. I'd say that's a decent amount there. There's really no uh, Next, you're gonna put an EQ on it. Just want to take out a lot of the lows. Quite frustratingly, my voice is quite <laughs> quite deep. So this means I have to really, really focus on how many, how much of the lows I take out. I think if we play this with. I said that sounds good. Helps to listen to of the actual, uh, of the rest of the track. So next we're going to add a lot of yesterday reverb and delay. I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna let you tell me how to do is somebody to care. I see myself do it. Oh, yeah. um, and now for the reverb. I'm not gonna let you tell me how to do it. But all I really want is. Again, I, I feel like if, if you if you've processed vocals before, you sort of have to put all the all the methodology out the window when it comes to reverb. You just have to add a lot of it in this sort of stuff, but it, it works. It sounds good. So uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, I've I've actually brought in a couple of other ones just to demonstrate my next point. Um, firstly, we'll send them to the right track. Time will pass and things will change But somewhere out there I'm just doing fine So we've got that. The next point I want to demonstrate was harmonies. Panda Bear uses a lot of harmonies. Yeah, I mean that shouldn't really be a problem. Time will pass Um, now the thing here is, <laughs> this is quite high in my, in my register, I'm not actually able to sing the harmony part that I want to, um, so I'm just going to show you how I manage to uh, make it sound the way that I wanted to. Sort of looking at like a third up from this, and so what I did is I sung that, but I sung it an octave down. Time will pass and things will change, but somewhere out there I'm just doing fine. Move out a key. But what I did is I pitched it up 12 semitones. I'm also gonna, I, I, I can't remember, I think I upped it by like 40 cents. Really flat, that's quite embarrassing. That, uh, if it's on the Stretch Pro, it won't stretch it when you change the pitch. So it, it sounds a little bit weird, but because it's a harmony part, it doesn't matter too much that if you listen to it. It doesn't sound too off, but what I did in mine is I lowered the formants a little bit. Just so it sounds a little bit more like my voice, because when you pitch it up, the performance go a bit higher. Did you hear that? Next, I wanted to go through. Um, adding more samples. There's definitely parts in Person Pitch where he'll, he'll layer different samples. And this can be quite tricky to do because the samples really have to work together. It's quite hard to find multiple samples that do that. So I, I used a few more samples in this, but these were the main two I wanted to highlight. Um, I think they're the more evident ones. This first one is uh, from Station to Station by David Bowie. Stays. 
so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to speed this up all. Okay, so I've, I've stretched the samples properly, but the first thing you'll probably encounter is that, that they're not in key. See, yeah, that sounds a bit weird. So uh, we're going to do that right now. I think you, you can try and sing the uh, the, the tonal center for both um, for both samples. But what what I find easiest is bringing out just something like FL key, something simple, and then trying to see what um, key this is. So you can see we're in E flat major center and then we're going to do the same thing for the Bowie one. Um, I'm actually going to change this to Stretch Pro. So you see this is in D. So all we need to do is pitch this up one semitone. It's in key. Just to um, clean this up a bit, I'm gonna take out quite a bit of the lows. going to do the same thing with the um, the other sample but I'm going to have that in a section where you can sort of hear it without the vocals. Okay so we've got it in key but one thing you might notice is that this sample is in 3-4 and our actual track is in 4-4. Sort of hear the difference. Um, so what I did to get around this, I cut apart the bit where the chord changes, so as you can see, and then I just laid a bit from before. So now it's in four four. Gonna um, process this a little bit differently. Um, we're still gonna take out the lows. But one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it very spacious. For this next part I've got to open the actual project file, I think it would just be a bit easier to, to demonstrate this next bit. Um, so what I did here is I added a few um, sound effects. You'll hear quite a lot over person pitch, there's a lot of just random, <laughs> just sort of found sounds, like cars driving by and you know, just weird stuff like that. So um, we've got a few things on here. I've got some sound effects from uh, the Petscop soundtrack, if you know what that is then <laughs> well done and also the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door soundtrack as well so you can hear stuff like this and now. so there's a wind blowing sound effect here I think this is a car going by it's a helicopter we've got a big water splash here which uh, yeah very panda bear Yeah, I've also got this <laughs> a random Sesame Street episode um, in the back. Just 
background and stuff like that just adds quite a bit uh, to the atmosphere of it. Um, also keeps the brain engaged, I guess, because it is just the same sample looping over and over again. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. I mean, there's a few uh, edits I did. Like this is um, uh, the very last chord of, of that sample. I reversed it and made it into like a riser. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else to really say, I don't think. Yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Um, this is something a bit different, so it's a bit out of my comfort zone. I apologise if for that. Yeah, if, if you want to make more of this sort of stuff, then uh, I'd love to. Um, I had an absolute blast making this track, so uh, yeah. If you want to make something similar, I hope that this video um, made that a possibility. Um, yeah. One last thing before the, uh, the end of the video. Me and a friend of mine have recently released a 30-minute art rock EP. Um, under the name Idio Twin. We're trying to push it as much as we can, so consider checking it out. You might get something out of it. Shameless plug. If you do listen to it, let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, back to the video. Comment, like, and subscribe if, if you want. All that good stuff. And uh, yeah, have fun. Uh, have fun producing. See you later. <laughs>